I'm using just three Fidelity index funds to create the easiest investing strategy you will ever find. And not only will this strategy take the guesswork out of investing, it's also going to help protect you from some of the worst investing mistakes you'll make. I'll show you how to find the best Fidelity index funds and how to build your own portfolio. We're talking index fund investing today on Let's Talk Money. Beat day. Make money. Make your money work Creating for you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now, in my years working as an equity analyst, one of the lies that I saw firsthand was just how Wall Street tries to convince investors that you have to be picking stocks. Turn on CNBC or really anything in the financial media and you're more likely than not to find a long list of recommendations for stocks to buy that day. What the pundits and the analysts won't tell you is that that's not the best investing strategy for 99% of investors out there. It's great for the pundits and the analysts. They collect billions in fees and ad dollars, but all that money is just going to be going from your pocket to theirs. That's why I wanted to do this video, sharing one of the, really one of the simplest investing strategies that you'll ever find and the best strategy for anyone that just wants to see their money grow. Now, I'll be using Fidelity index funds throughout the video, but honestly, you can put this strategy together with Vanguard or just about any other fund provider. In fact, I've got a video using Vanguard funds for the same strategy, so I'll link to that in the video description below so you can compare the two. I'm receiving no compensation from Fidelity or commissions for this video. I just wanted to show you how easy it can be to build a solid portfolio of stocks, bonds, and real estate with a simple stress-free investing strategy. Now, the problem with the whole stock picking lie that Wall Street pulls over on investors is that it just leads to these bad investing decisions. You end up jumping in and out of stocks, losing thousands in fees, and you get nowhere. In fact, Dalbar's annual study shows the average investor earned just 2.6% annually over the decade to 2013 versus a stock market return of 7.4% and even a 4.6% annualized return in bonds. Now, what I'm going to show you right now is going to protect you from these bad investing decisions and really save you thousands in those stock picking fees. I'll first take you through the website for Fidelity Funds, show you how to find the best Fidelity Funds for your portfolio. I'll then reveal that simple three fund portfolio and even how to combine it with a little bit of extra stock picking for that added return. First though, I want to get your opinion. I'm going to be using Fidelity funds here, but I've talked about Vanguard and iShares on the channel as well. A question is, do you have a preference for funds? Do you prefer Vanguard, Fidelity, or Schwab or some other fund company for your investments and why? Scroll down and let me know in the comments which do you use, which fund provider do you prefer, and why. The fund screener on Fidelity is extremely detailed with over 2,000 ETFs and is actually going to help you find funds from other companies, so like Vanguard and those iShares funds as well. It's almost a little too detailed and you kind of need to know what you're looking for in the first place, what these filters are that you're going to use to find a fund, but I'll take you through a few here to kind of explain the process. On the left menu, you'll find over a hundred filters you can use to find funds, including filtering by asset class, so, so stocks, bonds, and real estate, filtering funds by sectors or performance, and even analyst ratings. For example, if we wanted to find a high yield bond fund, we would toggle this basic ETF facts and asset class here, and then fixed income in the, in the box. Then we could scroll down to investment philosophy and toggle this passively managed. Now that's going to give us the mostly index funds that are going to be a little cheaper compared to those actively managed funds. Then down to fundamentals here and we can filter on this 30 day SEC yield for, for funds paying over a 3% dividend yield. That's still going to leave us with 59 funds to choose from and you can get all the data on each of these from the tabs at the top. If we click on income characteristics we can see the dividend yield and some other ideas. Uh, this performance and risk tab shows returns as well as some risk measures like beta. This Analyst Opinions tab here gives you ratings from FactSet, Morningstar, and Ned Davis Research. Now I'm going to be the first to admit that the expense ratios on Fidelity really surprised me. Uh, with most funds from Vanguard and Schwab down to less than a tenth of a percent on that expense ratio, I was surprised to see Fidelity still charging around three tenths of a percent for most of its funds. The difference here is really in that management. So while most fund companies have gone to a passive index model where, where the funds follow strict rules for the investments, Fidelity is still largely managing its funds. Uh, so when you've got that passive index strategy, fees are just going to be lower because you don't need as many portfolio managers or analysts. When you're actively manage your, managing your funds, on the other hand, buying and selling to eke out a little bit higher returns, you're naturally just going to have higher costs and that's going to come through in higher expense ratios. 
When we look at the comparison of returns between Fidelity funds and some others though, and this has kind of surprised me as well, it looks like that active management is paying off though for the company and producing some returns that make up for those higher costs. Now we're gonna to get to that simple three fund strategy using Fidelity index funds now, but, but if you're liking the video and the info, do me a favor and tap that thumbs up button below. Now let's look at that portfolio of Fidelity funds because I think this is the simplest strategy that I've ever seen. Just these three exchange traded funds can take care of all of your investments. Now first we've got the Fidelity High Dividend Fund or ticker FDVV for that stock market exposure and a solid 4% dividend yield. That's more than twice the yield paid on the market and the fund charges a relatively low 0.29% expense ratio. Now one of my biggest gripes about index funds, and those of you in the community know this because I complain about it constantly, is that what you actually get in a supposedly diversified fund. Uh, for example, a lot of investors just put their money in an S&P 500 fund to get that whole stock market diversification. But what they don't realize is that more than a fifth of their money is in just one single sector, that's technology. In fact, we see in this graphic that just three sectors, so IT, healthcare, and financials make up almost half of the S&P fund. Just five of the 11 sectors make up 70% of that stock market fund. That means whatever happens in these sectors of the economy, these few sectors, is basically gonna be your investment return. So sectors like technology and consumer discretionary, which are extremely volatile around the economy, those are gonna make that market fund see those bigger ups and downs rather than a smoother, safer ride like you would expect in a, in a diversified fund. Now the Fidelity Fund does have its own weighting problems with six sectors accounting for most of the fund assets, uh, but you've got different sectors in here than that market fund. So you've got a consumer staples, energy, and utilities with higher weights in this uh, in a dividend-focused fund. What you can do to get a little bit more diversification and safety is just to split the amount that you have in stocks between this fund and maybe a market fund or some other stock fund. That's going to give you even more exposure to those different sectors, but you'll still get the benefit of a high dividend yield from that Fidelity fund. Looking at that Fidelity dividend fund versus the Spider S&P High Dividend Fund, uh, ticker SPYD, you see what I was talking about with this active versus passive management. The annual fee on the Fidelity fund is 0.23% higher than the Spider fund, but Fidelity has managed to make up for it with a 12% return over the last two years versus just 7% on that Spider fund. We'll use the Fidelity MSCI Real Estate Index ETF or ticker FREL for our real estate exposure. Uh, the fund charges a 0.08% expense ratio, which is about the lowest you'll find with Fidelity and pays a 4.74% dividend yield. This was really interesting that Fidelity is only charging 0.08% on its real estate fund, but then we see the fees on those, all those other funds are still so much higher. It really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I think you're going to start to see the company lowering its fees on these other funds as competition from Vanguard and then Schwab starts he heating up. This Fidelity real estate fund holds shares of 176 companies in that REIT and that property space, just about the same as the Vanguard REIT fund that we talk about on the channel. That's ticker VNQ. Now, I like that even the largest holdings here are less than 5% of the fund, so no single company really is going to destroy the returns if something happens. What really surprised me was this chart of the Fidelity Fund versus Vanguard on returns. Now, I've made the Vanguard Fund, that's ticker VNQ again, a regular investment on the channel, and I've put it in our 2019 challenge portfolio, but the Fidelity Fund has actually beaten it pretty soundly over the last two years. Now, our third fund is the Fidelity Total Bond ETF, that's ticker FBND, with a 0.36% expense ratio and a 2.9% dividend yield. Now, I'm including this one just to round out our Fidelity portfolio, but this is one where I think you could probably use a different fund, like maybe the Vanguard Long-Term Bond ETF, that's ticker BLV, uh, there is no reason to pay a 0.36% expense ratio on a bond fund, especially when other funds like that Vanguard one is charging just 0.07% and then pay comparable dividend yields. With the Fidelity Fund, you do get a nice mix of bonds with just under 40% in that super safe U.S. government bonds category, and, and the rest is mostly in corporate and mortgage bonds. It really hasn't helped the fund, though, with a return similar to other bond funds like this iShares Core U.S. Bond ETF, uh, that's ticker AGG, both with a 0.8% return over the last two years. With just these three funds though, you're getting solid diversification across three asset classes, stocks, bonds, and real estate. If you want a little bit more stock picking, you can put maybe 70% of your money in these funds and then invest the rest in a handful of, of maybe 10 individual stocks that you really like. See how I did this same simple fund portfolio strategy with Vanguard funds in the video on the right here. Click through to compare how the fees and the returns of the Fidelity funds stack up against Vanguard. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and the bell notification.